כידוע בשנים האחרונות רשות הכיבוי התחילה להכניס יותר ויותר לשוק את הנושא של המערכות, הכיב... המערכות הקשר האלחוטיות בבנייני היי רייז בילדינג. חברת אורד יצרה קשר עם חברת מרקוני שמכבדים אותנו פה בנוכחות שלהם. משה קולודני, בבקשה. Good morning, Tel Aviv. I'd rather be surfing outside. סליחה לכל המדברים פה עברית. השפה העברית, it's not so easy for me to speak, so I'd rather do this in English. First, I would like to thank Eli Krupkin, Yossi Gopher from Arad and Jennifer for inviting us to come all the way from New York. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to briefly explain what the ARC system is all about and why it's needed and why we have it. What I'm going to cover in this presentation is what is ARCs and why it's required, where and how they need to be installed, how the ARCs operates, the Marconi ARCs products and advances of our technology, the other ARCs equipment like antennas, couplers, cables, etc. that's needed in order to make it work. This presentation was more or less made for New York City, so that's why I have Fidney over here, but this could be easily adapted to any fire department around the world, which is here, the Mechabe Esh. Uh, IB wave and testing and DB explained the Marconi technology accreditations and why use Marconi technology arc system versus everybody else and question and answers which we'll do on later. What is arcs all about? Everyone remembers over here what happened on September 11th in 2001. I myself was there because I'm a Chavesh with Hatzala in New York since 1996. I was a five-year veteran at the time when it happened. Um, personally, I arrived about 20 minutes after the first tower was hit by the planes. We all know who did it. And the situation to describe was chaotic. This is the reason why the New York City Fire Department implemented the ARC system. What is an ARC system? The Twin Towers, as you know, was 110 floor stories high. That's 110 komot. Mala... From, from the ground up. Because it was the tallest building, it also had the antennas of all the communications from the fire department, the police department, the military, and Hatzala. We had our antennas also on the World Trade Center. And obviously we know the antennas came down, but there was another problem. Buildings today are being built with concrete, special heat plated glass in order to keep the, the energy efficient buildings. So basically what it happens is, as, imagine you have a cell phone and you're walking downstairs into the parking lot and then you have no service. It bothers you, I need service, I wanna call, I have to do this, I have to check my text message, it's impossible. Now put yourself in the shoes of a firefighter, a police officer, a chayal, someone that's running to an emergency or someone that's calling for an emergency and there's no communication. He's getting on his radio, he says, hello, uh, nothing. All you hear is that's all you hear. It's, it's a matter of life and death. Hatzalat nafashot. We all know that it even is Doche Shabbat Kodesh. It's the most important thing and we value life. So what do we do? So we have, for Wi-Fi, we have mesh Wi-Fi. We install little pieces around the building and that brings out that we have the service that you could get into your cell phone. That's the ARC system, auxiliary, Radio communication system, and basically what it does, it creates a mesh Wi-Fi of the repeater for the radio signal to go out throughout the building. Parking lots below the ground. You could have service over there and suddenly the it fills up with vehicles and now you don't have no service because the vehicles eats up the radio signal. So you, in such a place, you need to have service. And then there could be a fire. We spoke about before the Torah, the, the busy, you know, showing how the fire systems are installed with the smoke detectors and things like that. Where you have vehicles, it's a, it's a possibility you could have a fire. It could happen on its own. It could happen through a terrorist attack, through vandalism or others. Someone's trying to start a car or whatever and it makes a mistake and kaboom. So that's why the New York City Fire Department implemented the ARC system. It should be a radio system that works throughout the building, especially in critical areas like um, stairwells, near uh, machinery, near elevator banks, that you should have the communication to work in order to, that the firefighters can communicate with each other. Now let me go back a second to 
firefighters saw that the buildings are going to come crashing down. You had firefighters. As a firefighter, what does a firefighter do? He doesn't look the other way. When the <clears throat> hits the fan, they run towards it. We're trained to run the other way, right? No, they don't. They're looking to save lives. They're, that's what they're trained to do, and that's what they're going to do, and they die for it. But they shouldn't have to die for it. They got onto the radio and told units, come down. You're on the 50th floor. The building is going to come down. Try to get down as quick as possible. Nothing. All you heard is That's why we need the ARC system. Israel, I haven't been here because of COVID the last three years. I visited Israel more than times I could count on my fingers and my toes if I take off my shoes. I love the state of Israel. I learned here when I was um, in university. I came over here in Yerushalayim, and it's the place that I love. I wish I could live here, but right now, unfortunately, I live in New York, but uh, I love it here. I'd rather be surfing, like I said, out there, but I don't know how to surf yet. Someone's going to have to teach me. There's many new buildings. Why am I bringing it up? Because there's so many new buildings. I was walking around Yerushalayim, Tel Aviv. I was in Haifa. I was in um, Ashdod. Buildings are coming up taller. It looks like, a, wow, I'm here in a modern city. This has changed so much over the last couple of years. So the need for this technology is not maybe we should. Baruch Hashem, the fire department in, in Medinat Yisrael decided that this is, and they want to follow the same way that the New York City does with their arc system. So Arad reached out to us over a year ago. We've been working really, really hard to get it up to the code according to the way they need it, because obviously every fire department, every municipality has different needs and for the radio signals, for the different type of repeaters, and how many channels, and things like that. I'm going into technical stuff, but we've been working really hard. And we actually do have a special connection here in Medinat Yisrael, actually a couple of kilometers away from here. There's a small city called Bnei Brak. We have over there a technology company that we partner with that's working with us on the repeater in order to make the work in Israel and ensure we have a presence in Israel, not that we have to work Ben low me, call different hours. It's Sunday in America, they don't work. Shabbat over here, they don't work. So we have always communication whenever 24-7, chas shalom, if we ever need, we have it our communication. So the way it works, in, uh, uh, there's different, different rules. I, I apologize that this presentation is, was presented as for New York, so I might be off with the different, um, the different rules and regulations, what requires, which building requires our ARC system and which, system, which building does not. The general rule, I believe, it has more than two floors below level, bef below ground level here in, in, uh, in Israel requires an ARC system. And I think, my, uh, some, uh, if I'm correct? Two floors. 42 meters above the ground would also require it, which is basically almost the same as New York. In New York, it's 150 feet, and if it has more than one floor below level, you need it. Um, we also have that if the building itself is larger than 250,000 square feet, I don't know how much that's the meters, but I'm sure it's uh, 75,000 square, square meters, Mashukaze. Yeah, a lot more. Okay, I, I failed the math, so don't take the, don't hold this against me. But basically, it gives you the picture. Wherever you have a larger building, you can't require every single building to have an arc system, because then if you, the communications, you're gonna, somebody in Haifa is gonna open up his radio, you'll hear it in Tel Aviv, and the firefighters over here are gonna go crazy, what's going on over here? So you have to be able to keep it within the building. I'm gonna show you soon, um, how it's, it is in a building. I have an outdoor plan so you can see basically how the system setup is. But we have two systems. I like to call them the beauty and the beast. The beauty is the, the taller one, which is actually, it could fit into a small little closet because it has to be in a two hour fire rated room because you don't want in the case of something happens that it should, uh, it does, so it's required in a special room. And the beast is the one to the, uh, to the left that one is basically for really tall high-rise buildings. You could go as high as the Twin Towers. They could be able to take it in that, machi in that machine itself. Like I said, it's a, it needs to be in a two-hour room. There's also called, uh, there's another part of the system, which is the DRC, which we have a demo in the back, which we built specifically for, uh, for, uh, for, the, for Israel, which, uh, you know, it's in Hebrew, and uh, the dials is according to how they need it. 
Um, we, I think we'll be able to show it to you if it works. It might have been on a 12-hour flight, so I might have decided to, to, to give us some issues, but hopefully not. But basically, this is what we have in the lobby in the building, usually in the security desk or by the front desk, which they have the same thing like they have the fire alarm panel, which they could operate it over there. So this is the remote console, which sometimes you could have the main system, which I showed you in the previous slide, either in the cellar, or it could be on any floor, as long as it's in a two-hour room. And this is the remote control, basically, which the firefighters could utilize, the commander that comes on the scene to utilize. Everything is digitalized, it's touch screen. It's, an, it's based, uh, um, you could see over there th many, many different things like the temperature control, the radio communication, which antenna is failing, um, the, the, the AC, the DC, the backup battery, it just has, a, the list goes on and on. This is more or less a sketch. I have a much nicer slide, I promise. This shows basically how the system works, where you have the, a splitter coming out from the, from the RAU, which is the main system goes up to tappers, couplers, which t breaks away from the RF signal because you have a lot of RF signal going through and wherever you want to stop to bring out a little antenna, uh, to, uh, to bring out the antenna strength on each to bring out the antenna, you have to have a tapper that you taking away a little bit of the, d uh, the DB, the broadcasting to that antenna and you uh, pull it up and then it goes up as it goes up the building. Like I said, here I have a fancier one. Um, this shows you basically a simple building that has two floors below ground. It shows you where the RAU is, which is the main system, how it's hooked up either to our ARCS communicator, which it could be uh, used, you know, telephony, that it goes through a phone system or through the, uh, to the, f to the fire alarm control panel. Every single thing, you have the red and the uh, antenna symbol, which basically has a combination of, it runs through coax cable. There's different sizes of that. You have the tappers. Oh, I'm sorry. Which one? Oh, this one. My aim is off. Okay. The, the, this is the. Let's do this again. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know I'll mess up. <laughs> so here it is. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. To get my aim back on over here. Okay. Thank God that's not a Glock. <laughs> I actually personally like six hour. I have a P320 at home. These are the tappers and these are the antennas, the different type of antennas. One is for like a ceiling antenna, one is a wall antenna, which is usually a little stronger. And this goes up throughout the building and that gives communication, that, that makes sure that uh, the communication is evenly distributed and it gets a hits in every, every area where it's needed. It's usually done in the stairwell because the stairwell is a two-hour fire-rated location. You don't want to have that this should be, you know, running through hallways and, the, uh, and the, you know, the ceiling. It's not, and aesthetically, it doesn't look the best. So in order to keep it into code, you keep it in the two hours, you know, in the stairwell for a two-hour fire rating. And here's the DRC, which is the remote operating component of the system which is usually in the lobby near the fire alarm control panel. In New York City, it has to be within five feet of the fire alarm control panel. It's like this, the firefighter, the commander comes in and he takes over control, operates the system, opens it, and if they want to do testing and things like that. Um, I basically explained all this already in the previous uh, thing, and uh, the Mechabeesh obviously is going to do testing, which we're still working on uh, the slide to update it, what they test for, what they look for. It's the battery disconnect and connect, antenna disconnect. Um, they check all the devices to make sure you follow the plans as it is on the CADS files, the, the drawings from the, you know, from the, the building and what, what was approved. Um, this is basically a quick highlight of what our company is, uh, what differentiates us from the other uh, ARC systems out there. We have, first of all, we, have, we don't have one system fits all. We don't give you a glove and say, make sure it fits. Your hand is too small, okay, your hand is too big. No, we have two separate systems in order to adapt according to the needs of the building. Um, the, the beast system, like I like to call it, which could work in buildings with 100 to 200 uh, floor stories high, has special adjustable steel legs 
So wherever you put it, because the thing has to be leveled, and in order to put it on a, any concrete slab, sometimes it's a little crooked, it's off. You don't have to get the contractor to come again and fix it. You just adjust the, the, rear, the, the legs on it. The be beauty one, the, the slim version, doesn't need a rear door access, so you can literally put it into a broom closet. Mashu, that's like one meter by one meter room, and you're good. It's true plug and play. We all know we have, we're adapted to technology. You buy a laptop, you plug it in, you want to make sure it works. You buy a remote mouse or uh, something like this. You want to make sure you plug in, you put in the USB, that it, yeah, it works, it downloads its software, it does everything like that. This system is true plug and play. When we deliver a system out of our manufacturing plant, all the technician has to do is plug in the CAT5, put in the power, connect the coax wire that comes to the antennas, power on the system, voila, it's working. We're also the only company out there that's ETL listed. We know that many, many engineers won't sign off on a job on a, a piece of equipment that doesn't have some type of hech shell, right? Is it kosher or not, right? Same thing is with ETL, UL, which is a branch of the UL. This, we're the only system that has our system, which is ETL certified. We also train and certify our distributors and installer to come and authorize installer. They go through an extensive two-day training. We bring them down to our facility. We make them install. We show them. We do hands-on. And they get a special ID card because we want to make sure that once we send out a system like this on the field and they install it, they know what they're doing. And like this, we could certify the product. Another important thing, which is we all love apps, right? I personally, WhatsApp. Mm. Yeah, you know, you, you get the point. Anyhow, this, we, we developed our own app that, especially for the installers, which they could upload the drawings onto the app. They could do the testing and set up grids where, in order to see where the antenna has to go for the antenna placement, where will be the best place to put the antenna. You could do troubleshooting on the system, antenna monitoring, heat temperature, you know, you want to make sure that the system is up, that the battery backup is working, and that it could hold a 24-hour charge. We could send through it also remote updates through the system for the firmware and the software to make sure that it works. So not every time something is wrong, we need to come down and, of course, the technician to come down. We could all do it remotely plus much, much more. Currently, it's only available on the Google Play. It's not on the Apple, it's not on the Apple uh, Store. Um, I, told, I was told I only have 20 minutes to talk, so I'm going to zip through this. This is basically, it shows you the 108 system, which I call the Beast. This is meant for really high-rise buildings. It has front and rear door access. And, and uh, uh, the difference over here, like I, I mentioned before, that this system could go for really high-rise buildings and it also has something called antenna active antenna monitoring, which it gives you exactly if so many is using the stairwell to deliver a couch or a refrigerator and is going up the stairwells and boom, knocks into the antenna. Nobody's gonna know that the antenna is off. Until God forbid the firefighters come, there's an emergency and there's a law of it, I'll come a chamesh, lama, because somebody needed to bring up a couch, right? Or somebody had to bring down his refrigerator or whatever, whatever it is, vandalism or terrorism, or whatever it is. We unfortunately, we're, we're everywhere you are, the, you have to be vigilant on these things. So the antenna to monitoring is something that we do. Th this is the thinner version, which I said, which could be literally put into a small little closet. It's for mid, mid buildings, more like a residential apartment buildings that go like 15 to 18 type, uh, stories high. And this only needs front door access. So basically you could put it into a little uh, cabinet, a little closet, like a broom closet. Um, I'm zipping through this because I, I think I'm over our time, but just I want, there's other things I have to put in to give you. Um, it, we, made, we built a system for simplicity. Basically, where the installers have to know, they only have to know the yellow area where to plug in the, the different plugs that they have to put in in order to connect the machine once they install on the antennas throughout the building. So everything is marked, Rachel Bitra Haktana, basically just like that. This is the remote screen on the DRC, which you see everything. It gives you the main power status, the DC power status, backup battery, the ARC's health, the cabinet, if it the door is um, opened or tampered with, the system temp temperature, and the antenna system status. 
The next screenshot goes in more in depth. It shows you the actual numbers from each of these things that I mentioned. And here's a screenshot of let's say steer a B uh, floor two, whatever, if the port is okay. The MAC address, it gives you the RSSI number. It gives you that it's connected, if the port is okay and everything is okay. We also manufacture our own tappers, the smart tappers, which gives you basically, tell it, well, like I explained before, it tells you like floor 17 and comma, comma shevayischeb, stairwell gimel, binyan shalosh, there's a something, a problem over there. So you don't have to go looking around to try and figure it out. These are the different types of equipment that that it's utilized in the on the system, which is a uni antenna, omni ceiling antenna, splitters, power couplers. For the installers, I would go more in depth to explain what these are for, but I think for this we could just zip through it. Um, we have in-house engineers that takes the building plans and does an IB wave propagation studies like this. We don't over the amount of antennas and the amount of power of the radio signal throughout the building. It gives basically we put in the whole, you know, all the CAD files with all the thickness of the concrete, what machinery is on each location, and it gives us exactly where to put in the antennas. I remember affiliation is. Um, this is I know, like I said, it's geared more towards New York, but it's where a member of the New York FAA, the Tri-State Arcs Association, the Safer Buildings Coalition, which were featured and we won the reward from them last year. We're an NFFPA member. We also um, all the specs from all our systems. I apologize, not the Israeli version because it's not out yet online. But usually you can find the specs from every single. So a technician wants he needs a to know more of the specs engineer, he could always visit our website, which has all of it. Um, we uh, also explained to them how the DB works, how you lose on each antenna, you lose a little bit DB as you're going up and higher the riser. We do that by calculating and everything. Um, in the past year, from all other chevrot, I think we have the most sign-offs that they give us to that shell that this building is kosher and ready to go. Um, yeah, thank you. Tadaraba. <laughs>